How's it going, guys and girls? Hope you guys had a great weekend. So I'm back today, as promised, with a breakdown of the gameplay trailer that Bioware revealed at the Game Awards. I just did a reaction video, but now I want to actually get into details. So let's start off by talking about the fact that the game looks absolutely gorgeous. The trailer was in 4K resolution, and the Frostbite engine looks amazing. I love the fact that it showcased Sarah Ryder, and I really like her voice actress. Sam, tell me about Sloan Kelly. So some of the different things that we saw, well, we got to see uh, some of the worlds that we'll be exploring, which look amazing. We actually got to see the galaxy map. And if we pause on this, uh, we can see a few uh, pieces of information. So we can see that we can actually scan uh, from the map. There is a definite progressions bar in the top that you can see. So it looks like we'll be scanning each of the planets and finding resources. And we can actually travel from the map as well. And if we see the travel does look very, very different. We actually got to see one of the hub worlds and we finally got to see some of our new companions, including a female Taurian and a Krogan, who it's confirmed the Krogan's name is Drac and the female Taurian's name is Vetra. And I have to say that Drac's armor looks absolutely awesome. I did think that the facial animations for Sarah Ryder looked a little bit off, especially when you compare to Scott Ryder. Um, but it's early days. I'm sure they'll be tweaking and perfecting those as they polish the game for release in spring. When we actually had a look at the hub world as well, there's a few things that you can pick out from this. So we could definitely see a navigation bar and we could see what looked like vendor symbols on there. Of course, you had your objective marker and we could see a few other symbols, though I'm not sure what these exactly mean. Uh, there is no mini map uh, for uh, direction, so that's interesting. And we did see some of the races on the hub world. So we got to see what looks like a female Krogan, and we can tell this from the armor type, Asari, Salarian, humans, and what looks like a new alien race. We got to meet a new character by the name of Sloane Kelly, who we know from conversation uh, served in the Alliance, and she did serve on the Nexus, I think as head of security, but something happened, and I don't know whether she was kicked off the Nexus or whatever, but she becomes a potential informant we got to see the conversation tree and this is very very different so we saw there were four options there uh, none of your business i'll be honest with you let's cut to the chase and get over yourself now in the middle you can see sort of a head and i think this definitely supports the uh, information from game informer that your conversation tree is not going to be like it was with the trilogy where you have your paragon your neutral and your renegade option but it's more going to be tailored towards an emotional response a, a sort of professional response and, and that kind of thing. So yeah, we also got to see the interrupt command on the right hand side, which was triggered by pressing the R1 button and that was to disarm. Now there is a red glow around it as if to link to a kind of a renegade uh, option, but we do know that Bioware are going, steering away from renegade and paragon. Uh, we got to finally see the new Mako or Nomad in action. And from that we could see a few things. So there is a boost button a jump button as well and the l2 button seems to do something though we're not clear on what uh, we could see in the top left hand corner as well that the the nomad has a mining computer that you activate using the right directional button and this allows you to scan for resources in the current areas and each current zone uh, is has a particular strength so it might be depleted or rich in minerals. We got to see some really cool scanning with Sarah Ryder exploring what looked like a crime scene and um, we saw a couple of symbols including an, an Andromeda Initiative logo uh, there was information on a, on a murder, a Krogan and when we scanned the body it did come up with information about the Krogan, about how he died and that sort of thing. And I really think it's interesting that they're going down this kind of Batman element in terms of investigating into an area and scanning it. And I think that's going to be really interesting. Uh, we got to see a lot more in terms of combat and this made me very happy because I've been wanting to see the combat for ages. The health bar, the shield and barrier bars are back. We got to see uh, Ryder using a grenade launcher which looked 
looked like. It had incendiary ammo. We got to see our two squad mates as well, which were in there, but there didn't seem to be powers that were connected to them. So how we activate these squad mates, I'm not sure, or if they just work automatically and we give them set commands, who knows, but they didn't seem, usually in the previous games you had a left or a right directional button, which allowed you to shortcut powers for them, but I couldn't see that in the actual gameplay. We got to see three powers, which looked like the Vanguard charge is back, which is epic. We got to see, I think it looked like a concussive shot, and uh, we also got to see a kind of a shield uh, that you could use, a bi biotic shield, which looked awesome. We got to see the jetpack in action, which was cool, so you could use it to dash and strafe, and interestingly as well, if you actually paused on the gameplay, it does appear that when you kill enemies, you can actually collect something from their remains. Now that is a first time for Mass Effect, so that's really interesting. As we saw more combat, we got to actually see the weapon wheel, and it looks like you can switch between ammo types. We got to see incendiary ammo and disruptor ammo, but it looks like they are consumables in this game because they definitely had a number attached to them. Tech combos seem to be back, and that obviously does a lot more damage. As we explored through, it looks like you can cool down pods as well to customize your characters, and we did see a little bit of customization, but you do really have to pause on the screen to get more information. It looks like our character has a carrying capacity of about 40. I'm sure that's something that we can upgrade as we go through. If we look at it as well, it seems that you obviously level up your character for Rider, and it looks like you can level the Nexus as well. And obviously we can see credits are recorded there, which I assume could be used to buy mods and uh, different types of uh, gear and ammo. Um, as well, it looks like you can customize your weapons, arm, ammo squad powers or your own powers and also the nomad we got to see some different uh, types of armor especially a pathfinder sentinel chest piece uh, which gave you increased tech damage uh, tech effect and duration and it looks like you can mod these ammo pieces as well now Bioware have said they're going away from the class-based system but it does look like they're still trying to encourage you to use certain classes um, because obviously you'll get benefits from that. It looks like there are slots for upgrading as well and customizing in terms of the helmet, chest, legs, and arms. Um, we then went on to have a look a little bit more of exploring and it looks like there are collectible resources in the world and we got to see some lithium and minerals which can be used to upgrade your barrier. Uh, but you can also get these from purchasing them from merchants and mining them with the Nomad. We got to see some hostile wildlife and this incredible monster which we came across Saw some new combat moves, including what looked like a scatter shot, your assault rifle. We got to see use of a uh, turret and a, a VI controlled turret and mines from the looks of it. Um, as well, we got to see some instant kills, um, which is interesting. So I am curious whether or not the boss fights can instantly kill you, similar to what happened in Mass Effect 3's multiplayer. So that's going to be really interesting. If you pause as well on, on another screen, we got to see some tech um combat skills in terms of a shield and in and sort of um a flamethrower but it looks like in the top right hand corner uh rider right here is in the middle of one of vetra's loyalty missions so that is confirmed loyalty missions are definitely going to be there we got to see uh, a little bit of an image on uh, remnant forces and we know that the remnant are going to be quite a large part of the game we have seen that in previous gameplay trailer footage as well and you can tell that from the sort of the green glow and some of the technology. So I'm really interested in the Remnant and I can't wait to actually explore more about them and see what they're all about. We got to see some more powers as well um, in the combat. We got to see a, a definitely what looks like a biotic pull uh, using tech powers as well, throw, a cryo ability, biohazard, uh, ammo, that kind of thing. And it is confirmed the Infiltrator Cloak will be back, which is wicked. And as well, uh, we could also see what looked on one screen, it looked like the world had a heat hazard. So that's going to be really interesting in terms of how that's going to affect you. Is that going to damage your shield over time? Are you going to have to go in and out of cover? It will be really interesting. You know, do we need to upgrade our character to be able to survive in these worlds? It'll be interesting to see a lot more. And we definitely definitely got a look at the new cat 
cat's enemy there was an anointed um npc character there that we were fighting and uh, that was definitely the cat and we got to see use of a melee weapon so there was lots of information um in this gameplay trailer and that's just a few of the things that i picked out from it i'm sure i've missed a lot of things and uh, i'm sure you guys will pick up on things that i haven't noticed but i have to say that the gameplay trailer was awesome it revealed a lot of information about the combat some things were confirmed from game informer and i cannot wait to find out more about andromeda in the upcoming uh, months now unfortunately we don't have a confirmed release date yet it is still set for spring 2017 i don't know why they're not giving us a definite release date because spring is not that far away maybe they're worried about doing that because if there is a delay then fans are obviously going to be disappointed i don't know but if you do look on websites like amazon and game collection they are all giving a march 31st release date when you pre-order the game so maybe it will be march 31st who knows um but i'm sure we will find out at some point and i'm hoping in the next gameplay trailer that we get to see might show us a little bit more about our characters our companions and i'd love to see more about the multiplayer that's coming as well so those are just a few of the things that i picked out in the gameplay footage at the game awards uh, what did you guys think of the footage did you guys notice anything that i didn't let me know in the comment section below take care guys and girls and as always happy gaming